What's up YouTube, I'm Mike and today I'm finally making a video that I've been putting off for quite some time just because I know the effect that talking about steroids has on other people or at least certainly the effect it had on me. So uh, what I'm going to be doing is sharing with you a study that shows or seems to show that taking caffeine with Anivar will increase its effects and can actually mean that you would need to use less Anivar or Oxandrolone to get the same results. But before I get to the science, I just want to share with you my own personal experience against my better judgment. So if you're only here for the science, look in the description and I'll link uh, the start of that part of the video. For anyone who's interested in my personal experience, um, basically the way I sort of learned about a lot of the the steroids that are out there on the market um, was from watching YouTube videos recently, uh, not recently, like over the, over the past few years, uh, particularly videos by Greg Doucette. Uh, his video, Anavar Explained, the second one, the one that was released like 10 months ago, is a fucking hilarious video. I've probably watched it 10, 15 times, I don't know, like there's just something about his explanation of this compound in that video that I just love. Like, he, he does a great job really of explaining exactly what you can expect from Oxandrolone. So if you haven't seen that video, uh, I will also put it in the description below. Please check it out. Obviously Greg is far more versed than I am and does just a great job of presenting the compound. So in the video, he talks about how, you know, <laughs> he's not really trying to get anyone to go out and do it but he recognizes that he's basically saying nothing but positive things about it. Like he talks about how it just feels so good to take. Like you just pop it and you're driving down the road and you just want to like turn the wheel of your car just like to feel your biceps flex. And he could not be more right. So basically, as much as I hate to admit it, after watching that video, like I don't know, it piqued my interest. Um, and so that's, like I said, that's why I have been making this video because I'm really not trying to endorse um, the use of anabolics. But um, so I went out and I conned the doctor. It took a lot of work, but I finally conned the doctor into prescribing me enough Anivar that I could take 30 milligrams a day for eight weeks. Uh, so I went to the pharmacy to pick it up and holy fuck, <laughs> let me just say, this stuff is outrageously priced. Like my insurance would not cover it. It was extremely expensive. So if you're going to do this, you should probably, I don't know, get it somewhere else, but you know, don't break the law, but I'm just saying like it's expensive. So be prepared for that. If you should get a script. Also, please don't ask how I got it. I'm not telling you the doctor's name. I'm not telling you how I talked him into it. None of that. Like there's plenty of clinics out there, doctors, you have to do your own research, figure it out for yourselves. So, that all being said, uh, I got 10 milligram pills and I started out with uh, 20 milligrams a day, 10 in the morning, 10 in the evening. And as Greg says, uh, the effects come on immediately. Like, within 30 minutes of popping the first pill, I could feel it starting to work. Like, I could feel the intensity in my body rising. I felt warm all over, kind of like sweating a little bit, just felt really pumped up. Um, it was almost like, it almost had like a speedy effect. It was like, like sort of like not like Adderall, like not tweaky, like just, I don't know, it just felt really intense. And so over the course of the first, I took uh, 20 milligrams, like I said, for, for a week straight, uh, 10 in the morning, 10 in the evening. and. About three days in, I remember telling my wife that, like, man, I just feel awesome. Like, I just felt good all day. My muscles felt full. They felt hard. Um, right out the gate, I started noticing, like, some minor strength improvements, which then became large strength improvements over probably the first three, four weeks. Like, I think I put 30 pounds on every one of my lifts. Performance in the gym was absurd just massive pumps, like everything just felt great. And so at the one week mark, I chose to bump it to 30 milligrams a day, 10 in the morning, 10 like at five o'clock in the afternoon, six o'clock in the evening, after a meal, like pre-workout, and then another dose right before bed. Um, 
there was really no need, honestly, for me to do this. Um, like, I, I wasn't feeling like my gains were tapering off or, or like I was plateauing in any way. I was only a week in. Uh, in all honesty, the reason I upped the dose well, there's two reasons. One, you know, depending on who you talk to, 20 milligrams is nothing, right? So like in Greg's video, excuse me, in Greg's video, he says that like 60 milligrams is like the sweet spot for him. Like that's where he's really feeling it, its effects. But then I think he said he's gone as high as 100 milligrams. And then if you watch like Bigger Steve talk about it, he says something sort of the opposite. Like he says you really probably only need like 25 milligrams and if you don't feel like that's working for you then your shit's probably not any good so i was obviously hoping that vigorous was right because i had pharmagrade oxandrolone but only enough to take 30 milligrams a day so i said fuck it i'm gonna take three a day because really what was driving me was that i wanted that pre-workout dose like it feels the most intense for probably the first few hours after you've taken it. And so taking one in the morning and then by the time I was going to the gym, like I know it was still active, but it just, I wasn't feeling it as much. So I started taking that third dose in the middle of the day. Uh, one thing worth mentioning is that I was taking my third dose, the evening dose, like literally as I was falling asleep because it does like kind of pump you up and make you feel kind of intense and so I was afraid it was going to negatively affect my sleep uh, I also take Ambien <laughs> like I know I take like a lot of drugs but I take Ambien to go to sleep so I would pop an Ambien and then I would wait till that was like fully kicked in and I was literally ready to just turn out the lights and then I would take my Anivar and then go straight to sleep before it had time to kick in and like wake me up. Um, going that route, I did not notice any sleep disturbance, really. I don't feel like, to my memory, I don't remember a problem with my sleep. Um, honestly, from my perspective, I could not report a single negative thing about this compound. Like, I felt fucking great all day, every day. Like, I was just pumped, ready to go to work, you know, going to sales meetings, just on fire, going to the gym, massive pumps, just feel good driving down the road, strength going through the roof, like, I mean, what's, <laughs> what's not to like, you know? And that was why I was not going to make the video because it feels somewhat bad to like come on YouTube and just praise the shit out of this drug, which is illegal for a lot of people to consume and is potentially, has potentially del deleterious um, you know, effects to the body, but you know, I mean, at the end of the day, what am I supposed to do? Lie and say it's terrible, it's horrible? It, it's not. It's great, but just keep in mind that, like, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not advising you in any way on what to do. Please just listen to your doctor's advice and don't break any laws. So, to get to the science part of this video, now that I've fully expressed my love affair for Anavar, um, one of the things that I noticed early on was that it, it, it seemed like if I, if I consumed caffeine alongside the Anavar dose, that it just hit that much harder. And so I just kind of figured it was in my head or, or whatever. And so I did some research to see if I was just manufacturing this. And sure enough, I was able to find a study that looked into this very, this very effect. So the study that I'm going to read you right now, and I'll either put it on the screen or I'll link it in the description, um, was out of Portugal. And they took, um, I believe it was a weight trained athlete, definitely somebody who was used to consuming caffeine, gave this person um, 400 UGs of Anavar, which I think is like 0.4 milligrams, like a minuscule, a minuscule dose, and then an equivalent amount of caffeine to three espressos a day. Uh, the aim of the study was to establish what the excretion profile of oxandrolone was for the subject. So um, they, they gave the Anavar, they gave all the caffeine, and then they took urine, they collected urine samples for 70 hours and they looked at the excretion rates of uh, oxandrolone and its metabolite epioxandrolone. And what they found was uh, a 20-fold increase in the 
excretion of oxandrolone and a 15-fold increase in the excretion of its metabolite, epioxandrolone. So in the study, they conclude, um, let's see here, with the 300 milligrams of caffeine, there were very large increases in excretion amount and rate observed for both oxandrolone and epioxandrolone. Overall, the total amount excreted for these two, st these two steroids is 20 times higher and 15 times higher. Um, the hypothesis is that caffeine is increasing both the absorption and the bioavailability of oxandrolone probably by increasing the gut emptying. From a practical point of view, this means that similar concentrations and effects may be achieved using lower doses. So obviously Anavar is a staple compound for bodybuilders, for strength athletes. Um, depending on who you listen to online or what you read, you get crazily, crazily varying doses from 30 milligrams a day to 100 milligrams a day. But what this study seems to suggest is that you could potentially get by with a lesser amount by administering caffeine alongside it. Now, if it wasn't for the fact that this was what I was personally experiencing, I might have been inclined to dismiss this out of hand, probably because I'm ignorant and don't fully understand science. But it would seem to me that if your body is excreting it at a higher rate, that at the very least you're negatively affecting its half-life. Now, maybe that doesn't logically follow. The other thing that it says is that it's, they, so they, they talked about how they felt that their data was showing that it increased absorption, right? So that's obviously good. The body's using it better. But that it also increased its bioavailability. My understanding is that Anavar is already like 97% bioavailable. So, not sure, obviously. <laughs> so you get like some portion of an extra 3%. Doesn't seem like it would be a huge deal. I, I tried to do some more research to see if there was any connection between uh, higher excretion rates and excre increased absorption or bioavailability. And I found conflicting information. So there are studies out there that suggest that um, doing something to cause the excretion rate to go up does not necessarily affect bioavailability or absorption rate depending on renal clearance, whether it's static or whether it's variable. So as it goes with bodybuilding pharmacology and really drugs in general, there's just so much conflicting data out there. It's hard to like narrow down anything specific. Um, you also cannot rule out that this is one study with a subject size of, of one. Like there's one guy in one study and apparently it has not been repeated. So please take all of this with a grain of salt. Uh, I just thought it was interesting and worth putting out there because it definitely mirrored my, uh, my personal experience. So uh, I would love to hear from anyone in the community who maybe has tried this or if there's anyone out there with, with better data than I can come across. Um, I tried to research it sort of not exhaustively, but one of the other things that I did find during my research was that caffeine in and of itself can increase serum, uh, serum testosterone levels during workouts. There's another study where they found that. I'll, I'll try to link it in the description. So you've got studies saying that caffeine can increase your serum concentration of testosterone. Now you've got Anavar in the mix and it's potentially agonizing the effects of Anavar. So uh, not surprising that people use, you know, drugs like this along with caffeine as pre-workouts. So anyway, hopefully you, uh, you got something out of this. Hopefully this was, uh, this was entertaining or interesting. One more time, let me just remind you, I'm not a doctor. Please do not listen to anything I'm saying. I'm an idiot. Uh, I'm just a 40 year old guy who likes playing with his body and having as much fun as I can in the gym and, um, you know, had this experience. So hopefully you can get some from it and we'll see you on the next one.